What's going on, y'all? What's happening? What's happening in the world? Los Angeles, California, and and beyond, Arizona, all over the place. All the people. Kerry Jones, AJ Sanders, watching. Oh man, Kerry, what's happening? AJ, what's going on? Uh, we're back. This is our third episode uh, of Opinion Nation. I am your host uh, of the show, and uh, the uh, engineer in the booth is Nick. Uh, you hear him back and forth. Um, this is pretty cool. You know, I, I, I first started uh, doing a little bit with uh, a guest. And, you know, now it just seems like it's just kind of cool doing it with just me and Nick and then the callers and, the, you know, a few people. Because then, um, you know, Nick is giving some good information, some good questions, man, on the chat line and the chat lines and the phone calls. So for those that want to know, the number to call in is 747-888-3082-747. Eight 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 three zero eight two, opinion nation. It's like an asshole. Everybody got one, and we got some stuff today that I know I'm gonna get some calls on. Because Nick, um, you know, I was a cop. We talk about that a lot. I was a cop for ten years, eighty four to ninety three. That's right. Live to tell about it. Would that be considered the glory years of oh. being a cop? For who? What year did you say it was? <laughs> 84 to 93. Oh, no, that's the crack era, man. Oh, God, it was crack. It was crack, dude. Listen, oh, no I, I, it was that. so crack era. When, <laughs> when when I went to the police academy, you know, we got a phone call already. Let's, let's take it. I don't even want to. Hey, go a second. But I'll tell you, got, uh, thanks for calling. Call, where are you calling from? What's your name? I'm calling from Houston, Texas. And, and I'm, I'm the... Uh, I'm the senior officer to uh, David Rayburn, and he was a police officer. I'm a top. He was my rookie. Oh man, you gotta give me a story then. Oh, I, 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 I kind of reckon, I kind of recognize the voice a little bit, but I know it's not. Right. So keep, keep talking. Uh, uh, my name is is Lance. No, God, no, 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 no. no. Uh-uh. No, man. Dude, how, how did this happen? Who told you about this show, Dave, man? Man, this dude here. Dave, look here, Dave. You popped up on my screen on Facebook, and I and I just I clicked in, man, and, and then I heard you talking. You know, you said, I used to be a police officer. <laughs> man, I <laughs> rolled with this God, dude. Dave, this was the dude. Man. Did not tell, but did not tell you, Nick. Or I almost was in a private conversation I had with somebody. And I was saying I, I learned from this guy. I rode with this guy, <laughs> and he would walk up to you and whisper in your ear, you know, and scare the living shit out of you. <laughs> he was slim, he was skinny. He got into a shootout, and, and, and he was on a car high. Did I, did I tell you that? This is the dude. The guy that saved you? No, 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 no. That oh, was okay. that was a. Uh, 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 Livingston. That that was that was Livingston. That, that, that uh, where where I, you know the way I tell it. I, you know I said you know I was gonna kick the dude ass if he hadn't pulled me off of him, <laughs> even though you know he had my gun. But that was, that's the best side point, you know. <laughs> but Lance, man, man, damn, man, I'm I'm, I'm man, I'm, I'm just glad you made it, dude. I, I'm because man, it was rough. Lance, I was I was just talking about you, man. Cause I was saying Lance was like. Because people ask me questions about, you know, how, you know, how policing. You know, I, right. the first time I was referred to as a crime fighter <laughs> was Lance. Lance. Lance did that. I mean, we're crime fighters, man. I mean, he was like, he was, he was Alonzo in uniform before training day, dude. Oh, man, that's one of oh, my man. favorite characters. He, he, I mean, Lance, we, 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 we riding around, Lance says, see them dudes there? They ain't up to no good. Pull up on the side up. The dudes take off running. Go! And we ch chase his own, man. And, 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 he, and Lance had this big-ass mustache. Dude, like, this <laughs> big old bushy mustache. Dude, man, had all the honeys, man. The honeys love Lance. No, God. no, don't stop lying. <laughs> stop lying. You had your share. Uh, yeah, yeah, and married a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well. And divorced a couple of them. Yeah, you know, you ate. Hey, you ain't no real cop if you ain't had at least two or three divorces. <laughs> you know, you, you bullshit. You you ain't even trying to be the police. You know. You. Oh man. But man, I'm, yeah, I'm, 
I'm so glad you still you still around, man. We lost we know we lost Charles Charlie Clark, man. You know, and um, yeah, I remember Charlie Clark. Yeah, uh, when he got shot at that uh, check cashing place. Damn, it's like places like that, like when Elston Howard got killed at that video. It's, it's like some of the worst places. To, I mean, anyway, it's bad, but. You know, I almost got it. I almost got it on Laura Copy in Fifth Ward. You know, in Trinity Gardens, when when that dude, um, that Colombian dude, tried tried to rob me in De Blanco for three thousand dollars, and he pulled the gun point blank right in my head and just pulled it, dude. I heard I heard Lance. I heard the hammer just go click click click, and and then all of a sudden, pow 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 pow, and and then suddenly somebody was down the street shooting from a tree. And it was the blunt right. shooting from in, in, uh, from the outside of the car on the on the passenger side, just shooting, put two bullet holes right above my head, two in the trunk, and hit the Man. dude, hit the dude. Then I shot the dude, and, and then his, his 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 my gun jammed because I I was shooting these hollow points in the Walter PPK, and the second round jammed, dude. And I'm trying to clear this shit. His friends That's grabbed him, right. threw him in the car, and took him to LBJ Hospital and threw him out on the sidewalk. And uh, dude, that 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 there, that I, you know you know. You know when they that when they man. yeah man yeah when when they take your shit and your your nuts, but, but that was a that wasn't like the it but that gave me that gave me the 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 idea that I could die, that was the first time that I realized you know what, I I could I I I, I could die, you know and then the right. blunt killed him you know the blunt killed himself or accidental or whatever they say it was, um, but but that night. And and then we, we you know you know and Conkel Lieutenant Conkel you know he was like right. you know take a couple of days off you know we'll see you you know like a couple of days I'm like nigga I'm gonna need a month you know and you're like no hey, that's, you what, you, to, that's you what you do no I didn't go I didn't go to, I didn't go to the site I don't I don't remember you know but I, I don't remember if I did or didn't um but man that 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 gun hole shit man that yeah, they can have that bro. Man, look here. I mean, you you uh, uh you you had experience that a lot of police officers never have, man. And you live to tell it. You still here, hmm. and that's real. You know, to go through a life and death situation like that. I didn't I didn't know you were working undercover out on the north side. Mm-hmm. Well, you, well, you know, I was I was central narcotics, so you know we would go everywhere. Okay. So you know, y'all go out to the Northeast. Everywhere, dude. It was, you know, you know, you get a call, you get a page, you know, we meet up. You know, Don got a case, or uh, Terry got a case, or somebody got a case. You suit up and you just go, you know, do what they say do. And that's right. what that was. I need you to be the money man. Turn out that wasn't even the right guy. That wasn't even the suspect that he had been working on. But you know, when you when you bust down on somebody like that, you've been working on them. Right. You they. You know they children. You don't. You, you don't hang out. It, it break your heart when you bring them down, dude. It break right. your heart. I bust a dude for a kilo of cocaine. That shit. It hurt. Right. Cause we hang out, and the girl in between. How long? How long? How long had you been hanging out with? Him? Probably about nine months. Oh, and and the girl in in between. Well, hold. You was undercover for nine months with with the guy. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, you just you build a relationship. Wow. That's called deep cover. Right if, if you don't build a relationship, you're you, you going to get hurt. But if you right. build a relationship from scratch, you know, you don't, you know, you, 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 you start from scratch. You don't take nobody else's snitch or nobody else's CI. You, you build your own case. You know, that way you can trust your own sources. Right. But, whew. Right. Did you meet him at the club or somewhere like that? Which one? Now, now this was this was the guy, the guy that you had worked on for nine months. No, I met him through. Um, I got this, this Lance. This story gonna blow your mind. You know, it's so fun. I keep thinking we gotta go to break, but we don't have to. Nope. Um, I was working traffic, the radar tra task force, and uh, this pearl white station wagon with mag wheels, bust my radar, pulled over. It was just cute shit. Okay, look right. like Jasmine guy. Mm -hmm. Now, years do before that, do. huh? Do what you do. Oh, look, years before that, I had my van, <laughs> and I had bought some headers from this custom shop that customized cars. You might remember the dude. I, 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 don't, I don't know if he's still around or not. And he had a, on the north side. He had a shop right there. You could see that was her husband. 
So now speed back forward, somehow, um, I can't remember how I, how I, I, I found out um, that she could get me. Well, I, I, I know when she found out I was working in narcotics, she did what she could help. And she had a connect. And then she told me, you know, you pulled me over on the freeway when you was in regular patrol. This is why you're undercover? No, I oh. was in the uniform. Oh, okay. Task Force. He I say. Uh, he was working some overtime. No, no, I was in radar task force that, that day shift. Oh. And uh, with, with Anthony, Anthony Davis. And um, I, she bust the radar. She said, when you stopped me, I had two kilos on the floorboard. Oh, damn. And I was like, wow. Wow. But then we became cool. She was like, man, she got me him. And then I, I gave her to Kevin Blair, and that was, I hadn't seen her since. Blair well, went to uh, yeah, DEA. DEA yeah. And, and Ollie's about to retire. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you know, I keep forgetting. Uh, we got people on, on my, on my, uh, uh, my live, they can't hear Lance. We got uh, to figure that out. I, I got a quick question for both of you guys. Okay. Have you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys are still, if Lance is still working. So uh -huh. if you work at Lance, you got to retired, answer. ain't you? No, no, I'm retired. Yeah. Retired. Okay, then maybe maybe you guys answer this question. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys ever let anybody go? Yeah. That you found, you know, caught red handed. Maybe you had built that rapport with that person. Have we ever let, in the, the question and is. I, I mean something big, not something small. Have we ever let anybody go for people on my own? Uh, yeah, you don't have to name any names, feet. but something big. Uh, I've let, I, big? Yeah. Like if you would have caught the girl with the coke in the car. Oh, hell after, no. After you guys had built this relationship, though. Two ki Man, listen, I would have been the king of the police department if I'd have busted a traffic stop with two kilos. Dude, they, they would have they built a statue in front of the, like, like Shaq, out in front of the Staples Center, in front of the police station. I couldn't cut. I couldn't yeah. cut nobody no slack. The, the, the cop in me wouldn't let it happen. That's just like, man, I could, man, please. I was like, girl, I, I'd been on. A, I'd have been on the news. I'd have been at least a black newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, within the context of, uh, you know, you might decide not to. Uh, arrest somebody on a traffic ticket or even write a traffic ticket because you have a lot of uh, discretion there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But if you're in a case where David was, where, you, where you're building relationships to try to get to bigger fish, then uh, it may be some things that, that, that may be done to, to help you know, bring that forward. He he could speak more to the to undercover work than I could because I I stayed on the streets and I worked the streets. Yeah, uh, mean your greatest for. access as far as the discretion would be a traffic ticket. Now, if somebody was drunk driving and they hit four or five people, you don't have no discretion. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta go. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. Well, Lance, man, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're still doing good, man, and uh, retired and laid back. Were you living on the golf course somewhere? Oh uh, no, I play a little golf, but I do I do a lot of uh, uh, civil rights activism mm -hmm. uh, in youth, man. And uh, uh, when I'm not doing that, I do my P T I work, and then I I do play on the golf course when I get a chance. Yeah. That's cool, man. I mean, that's what, at the end of the day, that's what we all live to, for, eventually to retire and kick back and play golf, you know, for those of us yeah, that, man. you know, can still still claim that. But, uh, man, I, I look here, I just want to, I just want to say, man, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of you out there, man, you know, because uh, most people don't get a chance in life to do the thing that they actually want to do. And I know that that you always wanted to be a comedian, and you did it, man. And there's a whole lot of people out there that, that, that can go through their whole life and never get a chance to do what they really wanted to do. Yeah. Well, you know, I, this guy once told me, he said, it's a whole lot easier to live with failure than to live with regret. And I just kept saying to myself, I, I don't want to say I, I should have I, I went. I should just, I should have went. The only thing I say now is I wish I, I should have retired from the police department first. <laughs> 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 got, a, <laughs> got, got that check. 
And if I could just be out right. here screwing up, messing up, starting over, you know, <laughs> fixing it. Right, right, right. But uh, right. I, I talked to one officer who retired recently. I, I, I forget who it was. It might have been Grady or somebody. And they were saying, yeah, 10 more years would have been 10 more years of risk, you know, and because I didn't have enough sense to, to take a cush job, you know, I, I'd have been like, hmm, what else could I try? You know, solo, you about, you horses. Talk a, you talking about a white boy job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, don't many else get them kind of jobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did. I didn't know that was a thing in the police force. Oh yeah. You know, J.D. Hunt. It was so funny with Jake. When I saw J.D. Huntsbury on a horse, I was like, you know what? And he's just light skinned enough to get that job. <laughs> he got. He got it too. Yeah, he did. They, they were. They couldn't figure it out. It was kind of ambiguous. Oh, it's it's racism everywhere it, it, within the police department. Yeah, I gotta explain. I don't understand that. It, I thought you guys had the yeah, uh, the blue wall, right? Ubiquitous. Yeah. Throughout the Houston Police Department, it is. You can go in any division, and you're gonna have the same issue. If you're black, or if you're Hispanic, the way you're gonna get discriminated against is in your assignment, in the cars that you drive, in the overtime that you get, and and you know you'll see you'll see guys that work with you on the same shift. And, you know, if, if if you walk in late a couple of times, a sergeant going to call you to the office. He's going to put that pen on you. Uh, you know, I might <laughs> write you up for this, da 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 Then you can see a white officer come in late all the time, and everybody in the room knows that he's late. But the sergeant's taking care of him. Mm-hmm. So you see, you, you, you deal with those things every day that you come to work. So you you quickly understand that that what they tell you in the academy is a lie. They say, well, we all blue. Now, when the stuff hit the fan, we black and y'all white. Mm-hmm. So so you you have to you have to fight them just for the things that you're supposed to get by regulations. That's what you have to do, you know. And that's a, that's all a part of it, and and you you start learning the difference between being a black officer and a white officer when you get in the police academy because that's where you're gonna see it first. Mm-hmm. I saw I saw white females <clears throat> in in my academy class that needed one or two points to to pass the the firearms test, and they ended up. It was given to them. Then I saw black cadets that I was with at the academy that that were in the same position, but they washed them out. So you learn early in the game uh, what that black skin means, mm-hmm. and 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 you you have to navigate your way through all of that in order to even be there twenty years. I mean, it's it's. It's, it's a daily grind that you just have to get used to dealing with. I mean, and I, I, don't, I don't think it's any different for people that work at Shell. Or yeah. At Sun they said it's like not getting like shot at. That. That's the only difference. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's real. <clears throat> yeah. It's real. David, David was there, you know. Yeah. Oh, only, oh, oh, too, only too well. Yeah, I, I don't think the mass public knows that, though. I think when we see cops, we just kind of clump you guys all together. You know, if you got the uniform on, man. I, I, I but that's t- interesting to know that it, even in that system, it's still divided. Oh God, yeah. You know, uh, and oh, let, cool. also people that's watching uh, on my live feed, let's go to RolloutStudios.com. I'm sorry, I'm to tell you that. RolloutStudios.com and just click on live. Um, and also, if you want to call in, it's seven four seven eight 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 three zero eight two. I'm David Rayburn, the host of Opinion Nation. On the phone is uh, Lance Stewart, who's a police officer. When I was a police officer, and I rode with him when I was a rookie. And uh, man, Lance, it's good to hear from you, bro. I'm I'm glad you made it. Yeah, man. I mean, it was just it was a long haul. You know, it had to be done, and and I'm I'm just glad to see that you're doing well. Yeah, man. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. Hey man, take care, brother. All right, you too. Wow, Lance Stewart, man, that's 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 incredible. 
Yeah, man, that, was, that was a lot of information I didn't know about. But I mean, I I, I didn't even know you was in my own. own oh, we was in friends on Facebook. Uh, yeah, man, you growing, man. Why yeah. say that? I'm looking at the the viewership now. Really? We almost tripled the first show already, so we good. Wow. Well, I guess I better mention uh, the sponsor of the show since. <laughs> Uh, the show has been sponsored, this show and all the shows have uh, been sponsored by the Social Workout Studio. If you're in the San Fernando Valley looking for fitness with a little fun, then you need to go check out the Social Workout Studio. Social Workout Studio. It's located at 21141 Devonshire Street in Chatsworth. Small group training available for just $25 per session. You can go to workout, I'm sorry, workingoutwithalice.com or socialworkoutstudio.com or just call certified trainer Alice Raybon at 310-902-5387 that's right 310-902-5387 to Social Workout Studio and so you heard it right her last name is Raybon it's my ex-wife that's her business and uh, it's so funny people we used to have a, a, a house when we were married we had a house and when we, I sold a house, we were going to buy another house. But something went awry, and I, uh, she uh, went and bought a gym. And I paid back years and years of child support and bought a Mercedes, which I later traded on for a Prius. And she still has a gym, and she's doing very well and training a lot of people. And uh, so do me a favor. Go out to the social workout studio. Say hello to Alice. She's sponsoring uh, Opinion Nation. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So if y'all could do that, I would appreciate that so much. Hey, yeah, man, I checked out uh, her videos. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, me doing training on the side um, as a profession. Mm -hmm. A lot of her techniques are legit. The push-ups with the BOSU ball, mm -hmm. you know, incorporating the, the treadmill with arm workouts, all of that stuff. You don't really see that in most gyms. So Yeah, well, you know, she Shouts competed. She competed. Uh, yeah, she that makes a lot of sense yeah. then. I was going to say, most trainers don't. Don't put those dynamics because they work out, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, she's a little fitness competitor. But y'all go check her out till I sent you. Um, anyway, the topic tonight, uh, I know everybody's seen this on the news and everything. And, and again, people that are uh, watching me on my feed on live, go to uh, uh, rolloutstudios.com, click live. <coughs> but... Um, uh, you know, in Texas, you know, a police officer shot this lady uh, who was turned out to be mentally disturbed. disturbed. Uh, uh, she was allegedly pregnant, which later turned out to not be pregnant. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of questions about this. Uh, um, it occurred in Baytown, Texas. You know, I'm from Houston. Baytown is only about 45 minutes, about an hour, you know. Actually, 45 minutes, or maybe a little less, from Houston. Got about 76,000 people. And um, apparently this guy was patrolling an apartment complex. You know, sounds a lot like uh, Trayvon. Um, and uh, he came upon this Pamela Turner, 44 years old. And, and the thing that kind of ticks me about this is that she, she was known to have warrants. You know what I mean? So if she if she has warrants or she don't have warrants, if she was known to have warrants, then why did you arrest her when she was known to have warrants and take her to jail and deal with the warrants? So you, you let her go, and this is the day you decide to, to mess with her. Um, we got some video. Yeah, they're checking out the video yeah. right now as we're talking about it. For those of you that haven't seen it, it's, it's kind of disgusting. Now, could you uh, talk a little bit about what's the normal protocol? I mean, we just watched the video. Um, and it, granted, it's shot from a distance, so we can't really see too much about the details. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are approaching somebody that you're familiar with and you know has a record or may have some issues, what's the protocol in, in handling that person? Well, you know, at least uh, this is uh, based on Houston, Houston's law. So at least the Houston Code of Criminal Procedure and Standard Operating Procedures uh, as I recall them, uh, if it's a a person that's deemed to be of mental, you know, have mental issues, you have to call a supervisor. So if, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. Back when I was a cop, dude, we didn't have no tasers. We didn't have no damn tasers. 
You either you either you you either hit the fist upside their head <laughs> or that that flashlight or that long ass stick with that little black grommet that you had on the end of them keep from losing it, somebody don't beat the hell out of you with. We didn't have that. You you grab somebody and you try to shake the sense back into their ass and you thought that it was crazy. And then when they did something to show you that it was really crazy, then you, you, you call a supervisor and you do a fifty one fifty, take their ass down and put, and put them in, in for evaluation. You know, now if I already know this dude, this chick has issues. Now it's a whole different protocol, you know. I, I, I now I know, you know. And and first of all, if you got warrants and you got and you fifty one fifty, I don't want to be up there all night long fucking with you. Right. I'm I'm gonna wave on by. I'm walk on by. <laughs> Cause you know you. I mean, it's a difference between that's the that's the difference between young cops and seasoned cops. You 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 look at all the stuff. Okay, what is the totality of the situation? Yeah. What is going? What is she doing? You know, she walks. At least I read that she walks the neighborhood with her dog. You know, that's all she does is walk. You know, so first of all, I look at the situation. It, it probably didn't have to happen. Right. First of all, let's just get that out. Uh, secondly, when he did decide to approach the lady, and she became combative for whatever reason. Um, and he took his taser, and she apparently took the taser from him, and he was in fear of being shocked with his own gun, with his own taser. You shocking me? <laughs> right. So he shoots about six. Well, he shoots at about six times. It, it said he, he only hit her once. So not only he's a punk, he can't even shoot straight. But um, the, the 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 thing is, first of all, like I say, we didn't have tasers. So to me, that's just another weapon you got to keep up with. Right. You know, when you got just a gun, you know, like I told you before, I, I've gotten to it because if, you know, a bad dude want to get your gun because they know they can get away, they get your gun. Right. They're going to shoot you in the leg, and kill you, whatever, but they're going to run and get away. That's the only thing you, you your gun's the side you protect. Now, you got a taser on the other side and you got a gun on this side, you can't turn no way. You got to face them head on now. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, I got what you're saying. You can't turn your gun side away, right, which right. how they train me in the academy. So I don't know how the hell they tell you to stand out if you got something on both sides of you. That's interesting. You know, and then you had the guy, Bart, up in San Francisco, say he meant to grab his taser and grab his gun, and I can understand that because I, I got two weapons on my waist, and I'm not sure which one, of, you know what I mean, which is which, right. because I'm, it's, it's, it's you got one gun on you, you know what to use that for, you know. That makes sense. Let me, let me ask you about, the, in the heat of the moment, because, you know, as civilians, we always look at these police shooters from the outside, mm -hmm. not being in that confrontation. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to know, in, in that moment, when, when a suspect say gets a hold of something like a taser, or maybe not your gun, but something that can be used as a weapon, is the immediate training response to, uh, you know, shoot that person? In the heat of the moment, when they when they take your weapon, uh, well, put it this way: if if they, like I can say, if you, a taser can be used as a weapon, which will allow them to take your officer's weapon. So the, the theory, I guarantee you, I you know, like I say, we didn't have them when I was a cop, but I guarantee the theory is that if they get a hold of your taser, they can use it against you and take your weapon and then shoot you. Uh, we got a call. Thanks for calling. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, how you doing, brother? Uh, McVeigh from Houston. Hey, McVeigh. McVeigh, how you doing? Hey, I'm all right, man. First, let me uh, say, man, I appreciate this platform in which you created. Um, I enjoy the dialogue and I enjoy the conversation being had. If I may, uh, for me, I think the police officers' job and duties have changed over the years, but I don't think the training and the approach to the job has evolved and changed with it. Unfortunately for so many of us who live in America, we're seen as adversarial and are aggressive before any actions are even taken. So to disarm and de-escalate situations, we're oftentimes met with aggression when we're aggressive and there's no room for de-escalation on either party's part. Correct. Yeah. I agree 100%. You know, and, you know, and and to me that is that is the, well, you know, I, I have two philosophies, you know, behind um, particularly white officers shooting black suspects. You know, I think some of that is is rooted in uh, a few bad apples getting to the police academy, that also wear uh, a different type of cap. Uh, 
the shape of a hood, and I think they have slid in and sit mm. through because I've sat with white officers and we went through the same training. And if I don't see, if I don't have, if I'm, if I hadn't shot three black dudes, then why are you shooting them? Uh, right, we right, learned the same right. stuff. You know better than I'm no better than you. We had to pass the same test. We know the same rules. But um, but but you've grown up or in the community and around individuals, so you understand from an empathetic standpoint what is going on in the environment in which you're patrolling. And we are taking material. Uh, excuse me, militarized individuals from the military and putting them on these police forces and asking them to change their thought process mm -hmm. when they're now dealing with civilians in non-combat situations. Mm. So yeah. until the laws change, from a mental standpoint, these things are going to continue. Now what has to happen is we have to start as a people, black people specifically, stop focusing on black officer and white officer and focus on the structure as a whole and try to change it from the ground up so that we can be seen as human more so than black. Mm. I like I'm going to hang up and listen. Again, I appreciate yourself and uh, Nick uh, for this platform, and I really enjoy the show. Tell me, tell me your name once again. Uh, I go by McVeigh out of Houston. Got, that's Texas. right, McVeigh. McVeigh from Houston. Shout gotcha. Out. All right, McVeigh, appreciate you, man. All right, King. Um, I, you know, it's it, he, he's right. I mean, even when I was a cop, the training is it's it's just uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't so much shoot. Even though somebody may say it's shoot and ask questions later, it depends on the scenario. You know, because I've been in situations where I could. Have. I mean, I, I had I, I was dead to right. You right. know, I did. I'd been shot at, and it was my turn to return fire, but because I had one of the suspects as cover. I didn't feel the need to return fire. And if I would have, I would have killed two people in the closet and only one person shot at me. Right. You know what I mean? It, that's just a judgment call. I, I would have justified those. I, I would have been justified. You know, I don't, for me it's a little difficult because I've, I've never been on the other side of the fence dealing with people that were in, in the law, what have you. Um, mm -hmm. But sitting there having these conversations, which I can understand, I guess I'm seeing the more the human factor of the job. You know, mm -hmm. I think when we see police officers, we don't see them as being human, almost as robots. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about it, if you were in any kind of altercation, even with somebody smaller than you, and you had a weapon on you, and you felt like this person may get the best of you, you're probably going to pull your weapon out and use it, you know, oh, in, yeah. in the heat of the moment. Yeah. So I know we sit back and we look at these, yeah. and I'm not making excuses by any means for anybody shooting anybody. Right. Um, but definitely applying the human factor to it and seeing the reality of the situation that I didn't even think about that, that she could have took that stun gun and stunned him with it. Yeah. And, and then took his weapon, and, and, you know, and the tables are turned. Shot down. him and shot somebody else in the park. Like that, that's right. how police think. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's right. just because when you go to the academy, you're going to watch hours and hours of tapes and videos of cops mm -hmm. getting blowed up, blowed away okay. by making mistakes. But, okay, like I, and I understand that's productive, right? But, but psychologically, with, is that not counterproductive? Because now you're going out there. Well, I guess you need to know this. You gotta, yeah, you got to get Right, so I guess toes. you need to know. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, that that's the ones that get caught. The ones that get caught up, the ones that ain't not paying attention. That's a, that's a scary mindset to have and yeah. put that into your brain, then to send you out there to yeah defend people and, who and, don't and, really care about you. Exactly. Thing. Right. It's the, well, I say it's the worst job in the world. It's the most it's the most uh, most unappreciative job. You know, um, it, it's only rewarding when you go you set a goal inside of it. And you do so, or something just happens, like that, like when I delivered that baby that time in the front seat of a car in the middle of the street. You know, that that was that was a moment. You know, because that you know, that kid now got two kids of his own. You know, he's thirty years old. You know what I mean? So, but that was a moment. But other than that, dude, man, all that old gun hole shit. You know, it ain't what it all all, all cranked up to be. You yep. know, I would imagine. I couldn't. Have, I've been in situations where people pulled out weapons before. And I, I don't have any training, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I see my response to it. So I wanted to know, um, do you think the training can be improved um, before these cops take the streets? Or like, like the gentleman said, to take somebody that's coming from a war and to, to essentially put them into another war. Right. Essentially. Right. Um, do you think there can be anything done about the mental um, mm. process of these cops and trying to get them on board with police and communities and not? You know, Nick, like he, he, brought a good, he brought a good point, man. 
You know, and I really hadn't gave much thought of that because they'll take a military guy in a minute. If he passes psych, he in. You right. know, so, you know, especially if they experience combat, you know, it might be difficult for them to deal with the urban environment, you know, um, as far as de-escalation. Or it could work just the opposite, you know, depending on their rank. You know, they, if they got a good rank, they may be, you know, superb in, in, their, in their police tactics and, and following rules. You know, it's all about rules, man. You know, just follow the doggone rules. Just do what you're supposed to do and, you know, uh, but I, as far as this shooting is concerned, I, I, I have a feeling it's going to be deemed justified j just for that reason. And I know, I know, I know in Houston they're protesting, and uh, um, now, now that doesn't mean civilly right. they can be held responsible. Uh, I don't think criminally. I think it's going to be justified. The cop, I think it's suspended right now. But um, you know, it's it's just like um, you know. You don't want to fault the cop for getting his taser taken. It got to be somebody's fault, though. They you know did, what I mean? They did train him. But if you're going to be trained, don't carry the damn taser if you can't hold on to the son of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? That's my thing. If you if Listen, if you can't shoot a shotgun, carry a 22. do Don't be out there trying to be big and bad, and you can't handle that. They you know, don't, stay in your lane. They don't teach you guys hand-to-hand -hand combat, though? Yeah. How, I've never seen a police officer use hand-to-hand -hand combat. I requested. I got into it with a cop I, in high school. I saw a video of this, this beach cop. He said that beach guy, he grabbed a dude, but he, he knows jujitsu, and he grabbed a dude by his neck, and the dude just was like, <laughs> and then and then he had on the ground, and the other one was coming over to fight him. He was just pushing them off one at a time while he had his other dude, oh, you nah. know. But that, that, that macho shit, man, I'm telling you. It, that's why they keep having new cadets and new new fresh meat come through there, you know, because you you need to have somebody that's thriving and want to run and run through walls and kick down doors and and yell all of those shit, you know, and get the bad guys. But trust me, they need to do it. You need to have somebody out there. There's some dudes out there need to be in jail. Oh no, I agree with that. You know what I mean? I, I I'm that. I'm glad we got police. It's just some of these guys, some of the judgment that some of these guys, and, and I know I'm guilty myself. I made bad judgment calls, and they could have got me killed, but I didn't kill nobody. See, that's the thing. If you if you make a bad judgment call, nobody dies. Ain't nobody got to know, but you. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, dude took my gun, slapped me, and gave it back to me. You ain't got to tell nobody right. that shit. You know, I wouldn't tell nobody. I don't give a damn if it was a book deal. <laughs> I'm not telling nobody. So what what happens in in a situation like that if you do get disarmed in a like in a um, situation? You're fucked. I, w I would assume when you get back to the precinct, you put on death patrol. If you make it? Yeah. Mm. Cause I wouldn't want to ride Worse with you. Worse than death patrol is going to be it, 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 your rep. You have a bad rep, dude. What, so w what happens in the so in the police world, right? If you start off, you're a detective, say, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And you do something wrong. What's what's the next step? I know the gentleman said that um, there's discrimination within the police force. Mm -hmm. So do they kick you back and make you take a desk job? Do they tell you to do traffic? Uh, it, it depends. Put you in a bad neighborhood. Different departments, you know. I think once you become a detective, you got to do some shit really bad to get bust down. Oh, you know wow, what I mean? Okay. Yeah, you got to be like slept with the chief sister or some shit. I, I mean, you got to, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, but instant because you, you know, you, you, you're you like a sergeant. You know what I mean? You gotcha. got Yeah, you have to really do something really screwed up. Um, but it depends on because some departments have different levels, you know, first grade and all that stuff. And, um, now what, ab what about a scenario like this? So this cop right here is involved in the sh in the shooting, mm -hmm. or if you're involved, say it doesn't have to be something this deep. If you just get in a fight with a, somebody and they film it, mm -hmm. then you automatically automatically have to come off the road and not police the neighborhoods until they figure the investigation, or you just go back to work until that's. Oh well, no! Usually the, you're going to be on administrative leave, some sort, you know, either with or without pay, pending investigation. You know, because because what happens if you get into another one? While you are in investigation for one already, oh, that makes the, sense. the city just might well just open up the bank and tell you take all you want. Does that apply to for the department itself? Cause I was looking at uh, some of the numbers of like police killings um, in the United States, mm -hmm. and they were really high in Bakersfield. I think Bakersfield is number one right now mm -hmm. um, since this was done in 2017, I believe this study was done. Uh, Bakersfield was at the top of the list. So I want to know what happens with the departments and assets. So if we if I get in a scenario, say you you shoot the lady with the taser, mm -hmm. and then next week like the other gentleman uh, that you mentioned earlier that slammed the lady, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so what happens to the department though itself? Well, you know, if it's systematic, they'll, they'll probably fire the chief. You Wh know, who's, is that the governor's position? 
to look into that? Or? Uh, the mayor. Oh, okay. Yeah, the mayor said the municipality. If this fire the chief and then the private assistant chief take over, something like that. Cause they're keeping the same dudes. Well, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, you just move them up the, up the, up the ladder a little shit. bit higher to, you know, till they retire. You know, uh, hey, man, it's just the, the best way to deal with the police is don't. Okay. Well, what what about the young lady uh, who got body slammed? Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that too when we come back. I think we should take a break. Everybody, a chance to go pee. And you know, everybody know they know what they're doing. They're listening to Opinionation on uh, RolloutStudios.com. If you're on my live feed on Facebook and you can't hear, because Nick is in the booth. He's the engineer on the show. Um, 747-888. 3082 is the call in number 747-888-3082. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with Opinionation. All right, you guys, post your questions in the chat room till we'll be right back. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight uh, on Opinion Nation. Uh, I'm your host, David Raybon. And uh, we've been talking about uh, police shootings. Uh, had Lance do it, man. Wow, Lance. Lance was a real crime fighter, dude. He called in. I was so surprised. I, I, but it's so funny because I recognize his voice. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, Lance. I'm glad he made it. But... Um, we're talking about this young lady, you know, that was that was recently um, body slammed uh, on the side of the freeway by a police officer. And uh, <laughs> there is, there's no excuse for that. It, it occurred in, in California, actually, in Rio Vista. Uh, you can see it for those that hadn't seen it. Uh, first of all, you can see she's very small kind of frail, maybe a little tall, but she's very frail, and that's just totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. Uh, there are take-along techniques just by grabbing the wrist, bending your hand a certain way, grabbing a certain part of the shoulder, that you come along moves that you they teach us. That, that there was an ego move. He did that because he was stronger. If that guy would have been Dwayne Johnson, he wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't even try that. And see, that what bothers me so much about this video. It's the fact that it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't take all that, man. You wouldn't have done a white woman like that. And um, the way you treat the mother. Now, this is not de-escalation. You know, uh, I don't care how crazy a person get, the officer is always supposed to maintain the cool. We're taught to maintain a calm through uh, horrible situations. And this is just disgusting. It's my see it. It's just it's disgusting. And you, know, you wonder why they hate you. Oh. So anyway, I think sometimes uh, some departments just have bad training techniques. You know, because when I was trained to be a police officer, either if you arrested a female, you, to even to check for safety to make sure she didn't have a gun, you had to call a female officer to the scene. We weren't allowed to pat down. Uh, I mean, you can pat down for safety with the back of your hand, but you couldn't pat down to make sure, you know, she had a razor blade up her butt. Has that changed? Do you know if that's changed in the uh, last couple of years? I don't know. I, I, I know, um, I think at the airport, they got some flexibility in that. Oh, y'all would imagine. The 911, yeah. And I, I know I went to that part of the day and the dude hit both my balls twice. I thought <laughs> we were shooting pool. Like, dude, if you don't stop, um, yeah, I'm not, not going that way ever, ever again. <laughs> so the next week when I walked by him, I just said, hey. Uh, no, um, you know, it's it's departments, you know, they they're, they're, their training is trying to get better, I believe. But it's the individuals. 
See, you know, if, if you can't train a bad heart, man. Yeah, that's a good point. You know what I mean? If you got ill will toward a particular person, you know, and, and another thing that um, I like that, that McVeigh has said, you know, Lee Brown believed in and, and he um, brought the process of what we call neighborhood oriented policing, NOP. Right. And, and you, in that neighborhood where you fit in that neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? And that way, and you get to know the neighbors, and you get to know everybody. They get to know you, you know. Uh, I see they're trying to do that here because I, I I see beat cops walking around two at a time in L.A. Right. And uh, never really saw that before. Um, I don't know if they, you know what they're saying, just staying out there or, <laughs> or being punished. Because I know I, when I work downtown, I had to do that walk a beat. Ain't nothing like walking a beat, dude. It, it, it break that down for us. I don't know what that means. Well, you, you got an air, a certain area. Okay. You know, you drive a car to a spot or they drop you off. And your drop job is, off. Yeah, your job is <laughs> stand out there and walk around and, and be present. And <laughs> how you doing, ma'am? And <laughs> can, can I help you cross the street? Or, you know, it's just it's just about visibility. I thought that was one of your movies. No. That's a real thing? Mm-hmm. And usually uh, special operations, these are in Houston, special operations handle that. And... Uh, special ops and um they'd like fun runs parades all stuff like that right right i see those cops sometimes yeah, yeah they, you know that but also dig into protection you know i i got a chance to to meet prince charles and right. uh you know bush senior and and um yeah when i was when i was working dig into protection you know which was which was kind of cool but boring as hell. <laughs> you staring at a, at a hallway, hoping somebody don't come through there. Ain't nobody coming through there. You, they can't get to the first floor. You just sitting there, like you know, you like the last defense. Oh, you yeah, know, I ain't trying to be the last defense. And, okay. and especially when you sleep. <laughs> Heck no. Nah. What's the what's the what's the the balance between it, the job being a police officer being exciting and being kind of mundane? I'd say probably eighty percent mundane. Oh, that explains why y'all get so amped up when it's a dude. It's I'm a gonna tell you something. Just a, waiting all day. Just imagine, just imagine you sitting in your car by yourself, you listening to music, just chilling like this, just chilling, and all of a sudden you hear your number, fourteen then twelve, fourteen then twelve, fourteen then twelve go, fourteen then twelve, we got a, a, a suicide. It's like oh, we got a a robbery in progress. Now robbery in progress is exciting because you get to run hot. You know, you get to turn red lights and siren on. <laughs> and then when I was do, I would turn my radio up loud because I the, the siren needs to bother me. The noise is right. So you, you mean your car radio? Uh, yeah, you I turn bump in music. Like, man, I bump in music <laughs> loud, especially like on chases. Right. Oh man, I'm chasing somebody, dude. We jamming. Oh, that's we jamming. It's, it was, you know, but <laughs> that's classic. You know, I mean, chases are cool until you crash. You know, now I never crashed, but I, I've been in a crash when well, my my trainer crashed, and then I had to get out the car and go chase the dude who crashed his car and went running down the side of the freeway. You know, but uh, they're fun though, because you know, but the policy has changed now because of safety. You know, right. people getting killed, running to the school bus, trying to run from the police. Yeah, so, I would imagine. Yeah, now you you can't. Even when I was a cop, they had a two two patrol unit. Uh, maximum that could that could follow. Oh, so if there was only one cop in that car, he couldn't give a chase. Well, yeah, he could give a chase, but and, and another backup unit, but okay. but no more could be added. And then Fox would get in the air, and then once Fox get in the air, a helicopter, they call them Fox. Once they get in the air, then they got control. A lot of times, like this happened recently uh, here, but I remember once before we had arrested, we had um, uh, auto auto self suspect, and he drove, and finally he, we just slowed down, and they let Fox take him. And then he went to a 7-Eleven, got out like he was going to go get a Coke. And so <laughs> before we could even get to the door, we just jumped out, just snatched his ass. <laughs> Man, come on. You know you stole that car. And probably that Coke. You got to play it smooth, though. I feel him. <laughs> I take your shot, man. I feel him. I ain't mad at him. Man, that crime fight, man. Well, you know, I think this this case here in Rio Vista, just because it's bad policing, man. I just think... Uh, they just need to get their shit together. It is a little excessive, I mean, you know. Um, the the one the lady that that lost her life, um, I think that was that could have been avoided. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, you shouldn't be able to lose your taser to uh, <laughs> a woman. I know you keep saying that. I guess that's a real it's thing. Just, that's 
just, I would like, listen, if it's going to be that easy taken, then take it from me. I don't need it. You know, if I can't get them with the fist or the flashlight and or, you know, the magnum, then 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 don't worry about it. Then let's just let it do it. It was fine all those years. I mean, even when they finally did get one, the supervisor, this was so this was crazy. The supervisors got the taser. So then you get a you get a crazy a fifty one fifty or something and you gotta wait, you gotta stand there and entertain him until the, the supervisor who's probably about an hour away, you know, go find the thing, make sure it's charged up, you know. And sometimes they've got that they ain't been charged. Man. <laughs> Have you speaking of that? Have you ever pulled your weapon out and it not worked? In, a, uh, in that type of situation? No, just the second round and I, it, it didn't keep firing. That happened. And the first round went off. The second round round didn't keep. In an automatic? Yeah. Oh, no. I was shooting hollow points in a in a in a gun that I should have been shooting ball ammunition. Yeah, you know I got rid of that gun too. <laughs> after that shit. Because I, I tell you, ain't no greater feeling than when someone tries to shoot you. And then they miss their opportunity, and now it's your turn, dude. It's like you, you can't be judged, you can't be in trouble. God won't be mad at you, you know. This dude tried to kill me. I'm gonna dust his ass. I, you know, I, I think you help shed a little light on the human aspect of being a cop. You know, some of the emotional parts that go along with uh, them body slamming people and what have you. So you know, well, I you know, appreciate that a little bit. Uh, thank you, man. Thanks, Nick. You know, I, I I've just seen it all, man. You know, I've seen um I've seen good people just die, come to work and die. Nobody expect to go to work and die. Go to work, and get paid on Friday. Yeah, I, I was mean? looking at this. They said in 2018, 144 cops were uh, killed in the line of duty. In, in er, nationwide. Yeah. Yeah. Is that now? Would that be a lot? Well, I mean, any number. No, I don't think that's. I think that's probably about average. You know. That's what I hate too. It's the worst job in the world, you know. And it's just, and the thing is, is it's unappreciative, you know. That nobody really. Only time you want the police to come is when you getting your ass victimized, <laughs> not when you fucking up. And yeah. you think about it, we fuck up more than we fuck up other people, you know. We we mess up more than we victimize other people, you know. A hundred percent. So, I guess we'll wrap this night's episode, episode three. This has been. It's been really nice. Yeah, I also want to give a shout out once again for my my sponsor, uh, Social Workout Studio. I want to remind everybody, if you're in the San Fernando Valley looking for fitness with a little fun, then you need to go check out Alice at the Social Workout Studio, 21141 Devonshire Street in Chatsworth. Just go to workingoutwithalice.com or socialworkoutstudio.com or just give her a ring, 310-902-5387. Alice from Dallas, Social Workout Studio. Go check it out. Tala Central. She's the official sponsor of Opinion Nation. Well, my closing opinion is that the best way to avoid being abused by police officers is to do whatever you can to do to avoid any type of contact. You know, cops' mindset isn't like yours. It's more about enforcement, respect, and then laws. An officer may let you slide on a ticket or a misdemeanor, but disrespect, resisting arrest, talking shit, particularly if you're of color, but get you hurt, or at least thrown in jail and hassled. Don't be argumentative. You won't win. Look, at the end of the day, everybody, cops, citizens, all want to go home where they live rather than the morgue or a funeral home. Do you want to be right, or do you want to be alive? You can decide right now. So when or if that situation arrives, you'll know exactly what to do. Unless you're riding dirty, then good luck with that. This is Opinion Nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I talk it, walk it, walk it, like I talk it, walk it, walk it, like I talk it.